In today's video, we're gonna be going over all the obstacles in my yard from the smallest to the biggest, from the easiest to the hardest. I'm gonna tell you how I built them, why. Here we go. This is extra branch, this why. If you have a chance to cut down your own branches or limbs or logs, you're gonna to wanna to leave one. I got one there and this one rotted away, but there was one on each side and that kept the log from rolling, which was perfect. You can also screw in a two by four or two by six to the end of the log to keep it from rolling. Just a small little tire like this. I got a rock covering it so my front wheel doesn't fall into there, but even something like this provides a lot of challenges. I'll link up to a video where when these Japanese riders hits a small object like this, I don't know, like 20 different ways. You try and get wide, float over it, things of that sort. Next up is going to be this triple log setup. Now I've got an entire video on this. These logs are about seven feet long and everything that I've got in my yard, I brought in by hand. So I didn't have any heavy equipment or anything. So this worked out perfect. I couldn't carry all three of these at once, but having them individually and then stacking them up as this pyramid worked out perfect. I could bring them in myself. I can still move it if I need to, but it's heavy enough to stay put. So this triple lock setup is tall enough to where you can get stuck on the bash plate, which I do like. It means you have to ride over it using some sort of technique. But at the same time, if you do get stuck, it gives you an opportunity to work on getting unstuck as well. This is a great one to work on double blips. You can also single blip this, like ramping over it, which is a lot of fun. And then finally, you can jab zap this, even though it's pretty small. Next to our fun, especially for beginners, just something to ride over and work up your confidence on going up and down, even if it's not full hills. Now these tires I did get from a big tractor place that was replacing tires, so I got them for free. So the big ones I got for free, as well as the little ones, the pallets I got for free as well. If you just drive around and look for and ask for places, hey, are you getting rid of those pallets? These are not heavy duty, strong ones, but they do the job. If you can find the ones like at Walmart or Lowe's that are blue and painted red, those are the best. I know Walmart does not give them away though. If you're going to be building your own obstacles and you want to get stuff at an inexpensive price, you're going to have to be outgoing. You're going to have to ask a lot of people. You're going to have to knock on a lot of doors. What the heck? You got nothing to lose. Whoa, look at that. That would probably be a reason why you want to secure all your obstacles. I could probably strap these together if I really wanted to, but in all honesty, I usually just ride right up the middle. Let's see what this one would look like if we tried to gap it. So I could get plenty of speed and ramp this from far away, but it would be more of a challenge to do it from static, really revving up the engine. And this one on the far side, it just has a couple of stones leading up to it and off of it. It's a good beginner obstacle. It just takes a little bit of commitment, balance, to make it a little more challenging. You could avoid those stones. Maybe even try to jab zap it. Now I do use a good bit of Roundup around all of these. And if you're worried about your yard and the grass dying, it comes back pretty quick. I had a railroad tie sitting right here for probably about two months. And in a month, the grass has already pretty much grown back. So this is definitely one of my favorite beginner obstacles. Nice, easy angle on this side, or you can hold pressure going this way. I did wind up having to put that support pallet there because a friend had actually come down front heavy and blown out one of the um, things there. I could have added more wood, but I just think it's a little more gradual this way. So I kind of like it. And I do have a stone there just as a little bit of a different challenge, something to mix it up. But just plywood on the front side gets pretty good traction, except for maybe in the winter. And uh, yeah, this, this is a great obstacle to build. Uh, if you have the wood, if you can make this happen. I think I had that as scrap and everything else there was free. So easy enough, just a single blip or a double blip. Even trying to stop on it before getting to the grass is a nice challenge. Or jab zap over. Double log was something that I made because you can't always put your front wheel down in between obstacles. Or you can just try and keep your momentum. Now these two tires that I buried in the dirt are actually kind of a funny story because 
<laughs> embarrassingly enough, I didn't know what I was doing when I was first starting this. And I'm watching X trial and I thought, man, I'll put these at a similar distance. And I can probably jump up and then hop the back wheel and gap this and then go the rest of the way over. I think I've been watching Tony Bow too often because that's so far outside of a normal person's skill set. And these just aren't sturdy enough. You can see this one's actually collapsing. So I've got a concrete block under it. This makes a great balance beam. I want to pick in these railroad ties up for like $7 a piece. And they make great balance beams. So this one's going just up hill and then these landscape timbers i actually got these for free somebody on marketplace was getting rid of a swing set and they said if you come get them you can have them for free so i went ahead and got them and i just got them connected Ugh, i don't know if you can see that just got them connected with like a two by six drilled in so that this balance beam is a little bit taller now this isn't the most sturdy of things to ride up and over it does provide a little bit of a challenge and honestly it's probably not worth it because the height of this if you go down i mean that's significant that's almost up to my hips so you got to be careful riding something like that it's like one of the best feelings right there is when you do a big old wheelie off of a balance beam i don't know there's something really cool about it definitely want a little bit more momentum for that that's about all i do on those two anymore so this next obstacle I really enjoy. I actually made it too soon before my skill level was ready, but it's basically just a pyramid, if you will. And I've got some bracing. This is a two by six here, two by six here. And this side is a lot steeper. So you can see that this side goes much steeper up, which gives you two different angles. I really like, you can add a pallet here just to take away some of that steepness, make it a little bit more comfortable for a beginner to learn. And then this board on top is something I had to add because my skid plate was hitting this and breaking apart some of the pallets. So this is much thicker um, piece that I added on top of here just to try and save the obstacle from being destroyed. This is just an old rusted out wheel for a tractor or a truck or something. I want to have burying it in the ground, but it does make a very nice similar log shape. The only thing is that it's very narrow. So because this is so narrow as you're going up and over, you've got to have good balance beforehand and there's no place to put your feet. So this one takes a little bit more commitment. That's why I'm saying it's a more difficult obstacle. I don't know that I would recommend this to your average person because it's also really old and rusted out. If you have a newer wheel, um, definitely might be a little bit easier. I did go ahead and paint some kind of marking spots where I was trying to do the double blip and hit my front tire intentionally right there. So Okay, so this next one I'm going to talk about is this whole balance beam setup. So these are about $10 a piece as railroad ties, and this one is sagging a little bit, but railroad ties make great balance beams. And I do have most of these anchored in with banding straps. So if you take a look, all of these are anchored in with banding straps that are screwed in, which allows them to hold their place a little bit better. But this one's not held in because I'm not really doing tricks or obstacle maneuvers over it. These ones I got free, I can't remember where I picked these up, but they're just um, an elevated piece of wood, so to speak. Starting this off, I've got these timbers and I wound up putting, you know, just a piece here in order to allow the timber to not be on the top of it. So hopefully just as a really narrow balance beam and go up and I also dug this out a little bit at the bottom. So I'm not gonna lift this up all the way, but you can see that that's to the ground a little bit and that anchors that balance beam a little bit as I start up. So ideally I can run this all the way across or with this pallet set up, I can run the balance beam going this way. And then on this side, just got an old stump with a little bit of an angle. I can run the balance beam this way. So here's just a nice pallet, kind of like a ramp just to hold pressure off of, um, or I can take the ramp and go up that way. And then I do wind up going over this as well. So this one just as a elevated log, um, an air log, just doing a jab sap to get up and over that one. This banding strap does hold it into place, although I've been putting a lot of pressure going this way. So I do have a couple of pieces of wood to try to hold this together so that it's pushing against all that. So this elevated log, I just wanted to raise up a little bit. So the log is anchored into this first top pallet and then I want to put another pallet and another pallet. And it kept moving out when I was doing all these jabs apps early on. So I wound up anchoring this. So this has got um, some anchors that are going into the ground as you can see there to try and keep it from moving because I was hitting it so hard from the front side, just pounding jabs apps into it. So I've got a banding strap on this side holding the log in place there. 
Then I also left a piece of this log extended so that it can hopefully stop as it's trying to roll this direction. In addition, I also have uh, this piece of just firewood that's kind of screwed and anchored in to keep the log from being able to roll that way. And then finally this piece here as well, just to keep this log from rolling. So in order to have less impact on my front tires, I was coming down and it's just a smoother landing. I also put in this pallet, which you can see is totally getting destroyed with age and weather, but these banding straps work pretty well. This one's obviously pretty worn out. So I would highly recommend these because I've been able to use them for a lot of different purposes. So holding pressure this first time. Woo. This one's hard to find. Yep, got it. First chance. Going the other way is a little bit more challenging though because the first timber is skinnier. Oh, that's not going to work. Helps to be tall. And then I do have this little timber down here. And this air log is pretty much perfect. And then this is the log I learned to jab zap on, so. So this wall is probably my favorite piece in the backyard. So many opportunities to do a lot of different things in a somewhat controlled or safe manner. So this has evolved over time and I'll go ahead and link a playlist to the backyard obstacle build of all these different things. But you guys can see railroad ties stacked up with these four by fours pressure treated in place. These are going out into concrete. That way the whole thing doesn't fall back. I do have a lot of pieces of concrete that I was able to secure from a junkyard. These are super helpful as far as making kickers or little cheater rocks or anything of that sort. I did put some padding up here just in case I was to fall on them, but I've left these poles pretty tall in case I want to build this up even higher. So all of the dirt that I brought in has been done by hand. Even my daughter has helped me in that. So a lot of dirt covering here and I even have a bunch of junk just buried in there. So I'll show you that as we get to the other side. So over here, you can see I just got a lot of different miscellaneous logs and rocks and kickers that I can add to the splat wall in order to get up and over. On this side, I just have a pallet that's coming down because a lot of the ways that I hit this are coming this way and I just didn't want that impact. So I just set that one there. Now this, this whole wall section is held in place instead of by big blocks, just by these pipes. So these pipes are just holding this wall from falling back this way. And I just drove these into the ground about two feet down and they're doing a good job. I also don't hit this wall as much as it's just a support wall. I do have a bunch of stuff that's just buried inside of this in order just to take up space and volume, including a big blue plastic drum, a 55 gallon drum. Unfortunately, that is starting to show, so I'll have to add a little bit more dirt. But one thing that I did on this backside is actually made a way to go over it this direction. So I wanted a little bit smaller of a wall. So this one's only three high as opposed to the bigger side wall. So the idea is that you can come this way and then have a flat platform to land on and then ride down this way. So I put some timbers in here and also built the dirt up a little bit. These are just driven into the ground again to hold it from coming back. But then I also have the banding straps just to keep these timbers from rolling back. So it's kind of like a stair step, so to speak, going up. This whole section was kind of a creative build. I wanted to have an undercut section so that I'd really have to zap up. So this is a big concrete piece that goes back in there and it's held in place. And then this long timber is actually going through this tire into that. And I thought this would be a nice undercut obstacle. Unfortunately, it's a little bit soft. You can't tell it now, but when I'm hitting the front wheel into that, it does move. So I've got just a simple ramp coming up this way. I've got the tire. Hopefully I can jab zap up that for you guys, although that's a very difficult one. Then this one I'm usually jab zapping. I just put that big block on top of there to kind of give it some more structure. This is just ramping up in a balanced and controlled manner. So I got a lot of different ways that I can go up and over this. And then I put the flags on that side just so I knew where that downward pallet was as I go over. This is just a pretty easy ramp coming up. And then got a hold pressure coming off the backside. But this smaller side wall does take a lot of balance because it's fairly narrow. And little RSG build up the revs. So this way coming at the hill, I am going a little bit uphill, which does change the approach a little bit. So this tire as a jab zap is a challenge. Not only is it undercut, it's high, but it's also a little bit soft, but we're gonna give it a go today. That was close. Okay, so this yard holds a little bit of water and it doesn't drain that easily. So you can see the ruts that are kind of being dug out there as I've been zapping 
and splatting up this wall. So I intentionally put these kind of stones as a runway leading up to the main portion of the wall that I'm typically trying to splat up because I didn't want that rear tire just digging huge ruts in the ground and then having to try and replace the dirt and add more dirt back in. So this has been a great addition. If you guys are gonna hit something in your backyard again and again and again, I would recommend using something like this. Again, these were scraps from a concrete uh, dump pile and they just made a great runway going in. So I intentionally built up the right side of this wall a little bit higher than the left, as you can probably tell, because I wanted to have different degrees or different heights, different challenges as I was approaching this rather than just one. So we'll try with this kicker first splatting up to the high side, and then we'll come over here to this cheater rock and we'll go up it a few different ways as well. There we go. All right, so coming on the runway using this cheater rock, we'll use a little ride up technique. Thanks for watching. I do have the winners for the t-shirt contest. If you guys didn't see that video, I was giving away shirts for who had the best comment or story of how they learned to ride trials and what they like about the sport. If you guys want to know how I learned the different moves that I have done, I do have bonus videos for members. So if you guys want to join the membership to see a trials curriculum, how to learn skills in order and progress quickly and safely, as well as an entire series on suspension setup for your bike, I do have that for membership. If you guys want to join that, you can hit the join button down below or watch this video, which explains more about it.